Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next discussion video. In this one, I'm actually going to do a discussion video on the upcoming uh, Avatar live action Netflix show. So it's probably going to be one of the few videos I do that's just kind of laser focused in on this show. Uh, and so, as you can probably tell, the topic is going to be sort of, they're doing an adaptation of Avatar, so they're doing book one water. What do they need to cover from book one and what do they not need to cover from book one? So um, just before we get into this, once again on the channel, I will mention that I do have YouTube channel member uh, membership active. So uh, if you click the join button anywhere on uh, my channel under any of my videos or anything like that, it's linked in the description of all my videos as well. You can help to support the channel and gain some perks, including a uh, sort of membership badges next to your name. You'll get a uh, channel member exclusive kind of emotes that you can use in live chat and in comments. Uh, that's just yeah like to let you know that's how you can support the channel at the higher tier uh, you also gain access to exclusive videos including a recent video i put up which is a full kind of race weekend of me in uh, the formula one 2021 game uh, it's actually the uh, championship decided the last race of the season so that's the most recent uh, channel member exclusive video i put up so if you're interested in something like that and other videos including some like Yu-Gi-Oh stuff lego building videos there's a lot of stuff um you know available there so um that is the you know, channel membership and the join button so with that out of the way let's get into this topic so what have they said about uh, avatar live action netflix in terms of what they're actually going to do so obviously the negatives about this are that mike and brian left for a reason uh, they were not happy, I suppose, creatively, despite the positions that they were in with what they were being asked to do, and have gone as far as to completely distance themselves from the product, saying that what will come out in the end could be good, but it won't be our vision. So they have uh, Albert Kim in now as the confirmed showrunner. Uh, we have the casting for at least the four main characters, and the basic comment that they're planning to be like, authentic to Avatar but also that they're going to do some new stuff they're going to expand like they've said on some things they're going to move it from being you know in their mind you know episodic to being serialized which I don't quite agree with uh, his interpretation of viewing Avatar as episodic but as we'll get into here I, I sort of get what he means especially in relation to book one which is likely what he's focused on there are a few more episodes that are standalone and so there is a need to adapt them. Uh, I don't think any officially confirmed information has come out about this show with regards to how many episodes there's going to be. Um, but there was a rumor, uh, and again, few a few of these rumors have come true. This one seems kind of reasonable, but I don't know if it's confirmed of people saying, uh, there's going to be 10 episodes and they're going to be what like an hour long and i'm guessing that means like 45 minutes to an hour long and obviously if they have that if they have like 60 minutes times 10 that is a longer amount of time for book one of avatar netflix than book one of actual avatar because obviously it's you know 20 by 22 is less than uh you know 60 by 10 of course um so you know, they shouldn't really have to cut anything and they can expand everything, but there is no possible way that they are going to do a shot for shot, complete perfect adaptation. It's basically one, going to be impossible, and two, with the approach that they seem to want to take, they want to merge the season together a little bit more. So, we've had this happen before, the last Airbender movie, which I know a lot, a lot of people like to talk about, but it made an attempt at turning this you know, 20 episode season into a what, 90, just over 90 minute movie. And obviously they made it work to a certain degree in that the plot comes across, but they skipped over a lot of the detail, a lot of the detail. And they made some very silly decisions along the way. But I think they, for the most part, with The Last Airbender movie, did somewhat manage to focus in on what the key aspects of book one are. And when you really break it down, 
Book one is rather simple when it comes to its main plot, and that's what we're going to do here. So I've got a Google document open here, and we're just going to kind of go through, make some comments about each of the episodes in terms of adapting it into uh, what they have to do here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much just going to mark, I'm going to highlight the title of the episodes that are sort of like they have to cover. They, there's, there's just no debate. This has to be covered basically in full no questions asked. So straight away, you know, we have to do um, uh, the boy in the iceberg. We have to do the Avatar Returns. There's just no question there at all. 103 has to be done. We'll skip over some of these episodes for now, and we'll go to 108. 107, obviously, an aspect of 107 is required when you do 108, but we'll get to the discussion about why I say that. But 108 is required. Uh, the storm is required for character development purposes. Um, though, of course, I think they might be able to choose maybe different points to tell these stories rather than needing the exact setup of the storm for this episode. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what they do with it. I think the core idea of the Blue Spirit and uh, what happens in the episode is needed with regard to Aang and Zuko helping each other. Um, and then the last three episodes, I think, pretty much in full, you need. Um, so there's that. And then everything else, I think, you have to just work around. Because there's no way you're doing this many one-shot episodes. So that leaves, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So less than half of the season, really, you consider to be sort of important essential to fulfilling what book one water actually is um the opening two-parter it's it has to start in the southern water tribe it has to have katara and ang sorry katara and Sokka find ang uh, zuko has to also find the avatar and everything that happens in these episodes has to happen 103 is such an important episode that it just by default has to be there it's so important in terms of ang has to learn what happened to his people and you have to have that emotion this is the the kind of character team building part for team avatar as they come together as a family and then on the zuko side of things you start off Z zuko's uh, rivalry with zhao you have to have zhao zhao is the main sort of villain i suppose technically proper villain for book one so the rivalry has to happen here you have to do that agni kai it's such an important moment um so for both ang and zuko's development this is key because after the first two episodes you're like zuko's the villain but here's the episode that gets across that zuko is not exactly allied with the fire nation in the same way as you think he is not the same type of character as zhao is and it helps to place zuko differently within the series so it's very very important um 108 is obviously where the main sort of plot what ang has to do fully comes out he learns a little bit of it from boomy in 105 about ozai is the enemy but here is where he learns about the comet from roku so there's a few things that happen here it's he fulfills the idea of communicating with a past avatar for basically the first time that's very important it's also you know he gets captured by zhao so that's another kind of important plot dynamic it's, it's another episode that sort of brings zuko and ang together and is a bit of a you know mid-season finale type episode in a way uh, and then of course when he talks to roku he learns about the comet and that he's on a time limit Reluctant Avatar has to do things quickly. This gets the plot going. It's the central kind of core of what happens here. So uh, that's what you have to do there. The storm is just like, like I said, it's super, super important for the backstory for the characters to, to learn about, you know, what drives Aang, what drives Zuko as like basically your two main characters. I think you perhaps maybe don't need to frame it as much with the whole like introducing the fishermen and stuff like that but you know it, it depends on how much you really value stuff like you know zuko saving his crew and stuff like that um that's sort of the what what you, the way he was in the past how he reacts to the crew showing that he still cares that who he was before isn't completely gone uh, and then the air nomad backstory i think is very important to do and i think if there's one thing that this show probably can and should do, given that it's going to be live action, it's going to be Netflix, is probably um, 
expand a little bit more on the Air Nomad genocide. I'm not saying show the whole thing in full, but I think you probably need to have something that delves into that at least to a certain degree. Like I said before, the Blue Spirit is important to cover because I think you have to have that episode where sort of like Zhao captures Aang and it seems like it's all over. But then Zuko comes in to save Aang from Zhao to get him for himself. But it's a moment that sort of highlights that to Aang very clearly that Zuko and Zhao to him are on the same side. But Zuko is, is fighting, is an underdog effectively against the Fire Nation just as well. And that, you know, the whole at the end could we have been friends you know that type of thing just planting that seed it's very important you maybe don't need to frame the episode in exactly the same way you can maybe have Zhao capture Aang in a different way do you need to introduce the Yuyan archers and have the whole um you know herbalist situation happen that's up to you but um the core idea of Blue Spirit Zuko I think is important to to have feature here to establish stuff that they're going to have to do in the next book and you know have that moment where Zuko says Aang here and then you know he says Appa in book two uh, as kind of good moments in a way for the character um, and then the three uh, northern water tribe episodes I think you just have to have them there in full because the plot from the opener here is get to the northern water tribe as soon as possible because Katara needs to learn water bending and then also you know Aang needs to learn it as well so uh, you have to have introduced Paku as the waterbending master to establish who Aang and Katara both learn from. And you have to take time to build up Yue, the spiritual stuff. And we get to see the spirit world, of course, across the finale. Set up the siege, the big action-packed battle at the end. You have to build to this more than anything else. So, you know, that's all fine. But you'll notice that it's very like front loaded and back loaded with basically just like, okay, in the middle of the book, he learns the truth about what exactly he has to do, the time scale he's under. And then these two moments are effectively just character development pieces rather than laser focused. They need to take place at this point in time. It's more of like, okay, Aang and Zuko can have a blue spirit moment in a slightly different way that gets across the same thing and the backstory stuff can also happen at maybe slightly different times if you want to. Now they're going to have to do some of the other stuff in the sense that let, let's go through the episodes I haven't highlighted here and highlight what they do and do not need to do. So Warriors of Kyoshi, they need to do this. You know Suki we now retroactively know is a very very important character so if there's any expansion Suki is probably the character that you want to do a little bit more with so Suki has to you know has to feature here uh, and you know you know the idea of more Suki question mark basically should there be more Suki in this adaptation than there even is in the show because while they were developing Avatar of course they realized sort of later in the process oh people really liked Suki when that episode aired and they only were able to sort of feature her back in in book two so there's massive gaps between Suki's appearances but everyone really likes Suki so why not feature a little bit more of her especially when now we actually have some more backstory from Suki alone now are you gonna is there gonna be time for individual focus on Suki not sure but I wouldn't mind if she features in a few more episodes so you have to feature Suki and I think the Kyoshi um, sort of introduction stuff uh, probably should maybe be a hit on a little bit more heavily. I wouldn't mind it if they used him coming across Kyoshi, if they even had him have maybe a little bit of a spiritual moment that there's a minor connection to Kyoshi, but he gets across that, no, if I'm going to learn anything about being the Avatar, I have to go to the Avatar after Kyoshi who's the one just before Aang so that she ha he has to go in order and set up the idea of like okay this is where Kyoshi is in the cycle but there's this other avatar that Aang needs to contact first who's going to give him the proper information uh, sort of a, like Roku uh, set setup um, and again tonally are they going to be able to do the stuff as like sort of silly as some of this stuff is in live action tonally can they get that that stuff right so again 
I'm, I'm fo focusing a little bit more on the sort of serious kind of plots and stuff like that that happen here. Um, but I think this has to happen because Kyo everything that is Kyoshi focused, Kyoshi Island focused, Tsuki focused is fan favorite material. You can't dismiss this just because you view it as not being the most important thing. Tsuki is going to be very important in at least one episode in book two and multiple episodes in um well, actually two episodes in book two and then multiple episodes at the end of book three so you have to do more setup for her earlier on because she is a team avatar member and um, and then like you obviously you have like zuko and fight there's a fight here why not use that ha happening here um and as like a thing, like you need to set that up as well for like Tsuki and Zuko's dynamic that he burned down her home basically. Now, Boomy again, you have to do Boomy intro again. Fan favorite setup for later. You know, all of this stuff is important. Um, again, he's only in this one episode, and then he's in one like one episode next season. And then again, a handful of episodes next season. But again, he is a super, super important character. Now, the thing with this episode is that it is a little one note. You know, are they going to devote a, a whole, like half of an episode or a full episode to the events of the King of Omashu? I'm not sure. But then, how do they do it? What, what do they say? Boom, ooh, boom, ee. Um, like, how, how does this actually, like, work how do you effectively introduce boomy without all the stuff behind it because the strength of this episode is getting across the unique character that boomy is the comedy the jokes the bad jokes and um, the weird like tasks that boomy sets ang to basically trick him how do we do that like ca can you know Pip and Paddle Opsicopolis. Can that stuff work in live action? Or is this episode just a little bit too comedy focused to do that sort of stuff? Um, I, I, I think, you know, th th this is where the tricky part of this is. How do they do the traveling aspect of book one? Because can you montage through some of this stuff? I'm not sure. Um... But you don't want to have like sort of five episodes focused here, maybe one episode here, and then the last two episodes just be this. You have to have some of this other stuff actually happen. And um, so, you know, but Boomy is also the one who tells him about Ozai. This is where we first properly get introduced. Like, that's the name of the Fire Lord. That's the name of Zuko's father. Is Boomy being a little serious towards the end of this episode? Um, imprisoned, obviously, like Haru and... Uh, Tyro is somewhat important. Um, you know, it's a Katara uh, character focus here as well. Uh, and then world uh, building for, I suppose, how the Fire Nation uh, treat the Earth Kingdom. Um, in the last Airbender movie, I think one of the things that they actually did relatively well is that they took, I think, the idea of this episode and sort of changed it into more of a montage of Team Avatar arrives at specific Earth Kingdom towns and sort of inspires them to fight back against the Fire Nation. Sort of creating more of an establishment of like... They're not secret undercover, like people know that the Avatar is back and the places that he visits do get inspired in that he inspires um, Suki and some of the Kyoshi warriors to leave the island. Um, you know, Haru and Tyro, you know, are, are inspired by what happens here. But the idea is, you know, you have to use an episode like this to build on that. Now, we didn't really focus much on what Haru and Tyro necessarily did, but I think you got the impression that before they joined up at the invasion in book three, that they were sort of uh, rebelling against the Fire Nation. And so I think you have to sort of do that sort of um, uh, uh, rebellion against uh, Fire Nation setup. Uh, just sort of uh, more on the war. Like we don't actually focus much on the war between the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation, which is the main center of the conflict. Uh, during this time because 
you know, the, the, the Southern Water Tribe is the only water tribe really participating in the war. And it's such a small group that they, they're not doing too much. So it is the Earth Kingdom basically fighting the Fire Nation. So, you know, uh, some, something to set up like what's actually going on is actually kind of important. Um, you, you guys have know, like I have some criticisms with this episode in terms of uh, terminology, technology and uh, in terms of how they do it, you know, it's the spirit world, but we never actually see the spirit world. But I think it is important to, you know, uh, introduce the spirit world uh, plus spirits. Um, and then mainly uh, set up for 108. Because really that's what this episode is. It, it's just uh, introducing you to what spirits in the spirit world are. And then you find out I needs to go speak to Roku to learn the truth about what's going on. Actually, you know, what's an avatar meant to do? What does a reluctant avatar do? That That's basically what's what's here. Um, hey, by setup, you know, if you want to include him, absolutely. It makes sense. But is he super, super important? I'm not sure. Now, the, so there's, there's, there's options you have here. But again, I don't think they need to focus and spend like as much time on this. So the question is like, these are all, these four episodes are all very scattered things. How do they make this work properly? I think, do they have to sort of like meld these two together? You know, really get across like, okay, okay, Amashu is still in the Earth Kingdom. Yes, it's one of the more powerful, you know, cities in the Earth Kingdom. But I think you might have to do more of an intro of these things together. Maybe get more into the idea of like Bumi as a leader and what he, what he's like, his approach that he takes that, okay, Aang, we are going to fight back against the Fire Nation. And then obviously later on you find out that uh, he surrendered. So, you know, something like that I think you, you can use for the setup. Um, obviously, I already covered 108. 109. Okay, so let's get into the idea of uh, um, Ang learning water bending, and then I'm just going to say arc question mark. This is one of the the, the weaker sort of I think uh, plots within ATLA the show, which is they don't really create any sort of dynamic that surrounds Ang learning water bending. It just sort of happens. He's immediately really good at it here. And then we just established that Katara surpasses him during the training with Paku because she's more devoted to the training, whereas Aang sort of gets it by default, so he doesn't focus as much on it. And so that's how Katara surpasses Aang at waterbending. But if he put his time in, you get the impression that like he doesn't have a problem with learning waterbending whatsoever. Again, this is where the last Airbender movie actually did a decent job. I think it's one of the, to me, it's the biggest sort of strength that the movie had over the show, which was that they created an arc surrounding Ang learning waterbending. You know, uh, control of emotion is important to waterbending. Um, and then they obviously did, uh, they tied, uh, tie water bending emotion to the loss of his people that's what they did in the show they established that he was not letting his emotions flow like water and and so he struggled with water bending even though there was the idea that he has the power he has the skill of water bending but he's not letting it flow enough and then finally, in the final sequence, it was sort of, they combined the Avatar State moment with him finally, um, you know, having this big connection, understanding what happened. Uh, because, again, they're the sort of kind of key points there is that, I, I'll highlight that there. Um, this, and then the loss of his people. I'm going to highlight these two as kind of particularly important points because in the grand scheme of the show, it is very surprising how little they really focus on the idea of like Aang reflecting on the loss of his people. It only happens a few times. Um, in like, it's, it's 103, they bring it up again in like the guru 
Um, and then, like, Ozai, I think, says something to Aang during their fight about the, the, the Air Nomad genocide. There's there's very few points where it is mentioned. Zhao might mention something about it, uh, but I might be misremembering that. So, again, this is where we bring up the idea of, you know, okay, how do we create more of an arc uh, surrounding this? And I think it's just, you know, okay, have them find a waterbending scroll. Have them do a little bit of waterbending training on the road, because Katara knows a little bit. But have Aang struggle a little bit highlight that there's really strong potential there for him to be amazing at water bending but that something's holding him back and i i and i think maybe tying it to lots of people is a good way to expand on that arc uh definitely um jet so uh so jet is important for later um you know uh let, let, let I'll, I'll mention the rough rhinos here So obviously uh, the rough rhinos are actually the people that Jet is angry at for what happened uh, to him. So we never actually get that connection. But before Jet dies, he never actually gets to confront the rough rhinos. So there might be a, some value to introducing them earlier on and um, establishing that, like making that clearer at this point that that is the idea with Jet. Um, but again look at all these different characters that we have here we have to introduce suki we have to introduce boomy potentially haru and tyro we have to introduce the spirit world we have to find a water bending scroll introduce jet and um, let's just say this gets skipped because even atla did not come back to this apart from to joke about it um so i i i can see this definitely being the one episode that they just do not really tackle at all. Again, I can see them making a reference like Ember Island players of them flying over the Great Divide and just establishing it as a landmark, just having maybe a cool shot of, look, there's the Great Divide. Uh, but I, I think that's maybe about it. I think they'll just do a reference to be like, hey, we know this, we know the history of this episode, that's it. Um, so yeah, we've already covered the storm. Uh, we've already covered the Blue Spirit. The Fortune Teller. So, what is actually important in this episode? It's basically sort of, um, it's basically Katang, Katang set up. Now, I think you can do this in a way where you can, you can basically, I think, sum this episode up more or less in kind of one scene, mainly. And that is just that Katara can go to a fortune teller, and it can be Aunt Wu, but we don't need to spend like 20 minutes there. You don't need to have everything that happens and the whole, you know, su superstition, like, um, you know, the, the, the town completely believes the fortune teller. You don't have to make a big issue of the fortune teller. It can just be a moment where Katara goes to a fortune teller and gets the fortune about um, you will marry, you know, a powerful bender um, and, and that sort of thing. And then you can have that moment of Aang being a powerful bender and establishing that Katara understands the connection later on. But that's mainly what I think this episode accomplishes as such. Do you need to do everything here? I get Makapu is kind of important location to a degree. Um, but I don't really think everything that this episode is about is absolutely uh, needed. Now, Bot of the Water Tribe. It's sort of uh, so uh, Sokka, Deve Sokka development here. Uh, in, in meeting a character like Bato um, is is kind of important. Um, it's a, a moment where Ang has a uh, Ang kind of flaw in this episode. Uh, you know, you could play on that if you want to, but again, the main thing is is that 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 saga development that happens. Uh, you have you know the the you know. June intro. You do need to introduce June. I'll say I say June slash Nyla uh, intro uh, plus uh, plus fight. So you have all that stuff, and um, that makes that this episode you know somewhat significant. But again, June Nyla I think can be introduced at maybe a slightly different point. Um, you can have Ang have a flawed moment in a slightly different episode. 
them coming across Bato, I suppose, is, is an interesting one. He is not the most important character. I think that's the, the big thing to get across here. Do they have to include Bato? I'm not necessarily sure. Because I think you could maybe have the Sokka development happen in these episodes. Like, you could create more of a rivalry, like, double down on that rivalry between Han and Sokka, and maybe have an ice dodging contest in the north. I'm not sure if the North necessarily do that or not, but I'm assuming they might still. So Sokka beats Han at ice dodging, and that that's the big proving moment. Uh, and maybe some of the, the Northern higher-ups notice that, and note that he's been you know, trained well or whatever. I think, you know, th there's an idea of you can, you can splash these moments around. It doesn't necessarily all have to happen in the exact same sequence, because the episodes are rather, you know... Um, like individual at, at certain points in the season so of course here in this episode you have a uh, Zhang Zhang intro uh, Katara healing is important uh, Zhao slash Zhang Zhang connection is kind of important here um, uh, uh, and then uh, Ang firebending arc so this episode actually has a decent amount, like Ang trying to do a little bit of firebending and it not working to set up eventually Zuko being the one to teach him correctly. That you do need to set up. Katara's healing is very important, so this has to happen here. Um, if you want to develop Zhao more, the Zhang Zhang stuff is the place to do it. And Zhang Zhang himself, like Bumi, like Paku, is I think required to be introduced at some point. Um, again, how do you necessarily do this without just literally having this exact same thing happen? In that, are we going are we going to have episodes like hour long episodes where it basically is just sort of two of these events happening in a row? Like we're here, then they move on to a town, and it kind of just is a two for one. I'm not sure. This is where it is tricky to do this adaptation because they're trying to make the book flow a little better. And I think that's what they're saying, uh, Albert Kim was saying in the statement that he made in that interview um, uh, last week, uh, was that he's trying to make some of these more solo episodes flow into the book a bit better. And how do they go about doing that? That to me, in terms of a, the writing on this show, is probably going to be more of the actually interesting thing. Uh, Northern Air Temple, I... I, I Unfortunately, I feel like I think this one is very, very skippable. I, I, I really do. Um, like, Teo slash the Mechanist. Um, you Again, you don't have to have these characters here, but I guess the Mechanist is kind of important. Uh, so you probably have to at least touch on that idea. Uh, you have the War... War balloon um, uh, set up for the Fire Nation. Uh, there's actually quite a big fight, um, so you can highlight that. Uh, and then I suppose just Ang and his people again. I'll just say slash past. Um, I suppose at this point, this is where I'll highlight the idea of uh, relics, the com uh, comic. Uh, relics um i think you probably should feature this at uh, the the last ever movie basically featured this idea as well that one of the ways that ang is captured by zhao is by luring ang in with relics from the past i think they should um they should do that definitely um so there's that um I suppose, did I skip anything here? Uh, yeah, the, the, like there's the pirates in 109. Do you necessarily need the pirates? Yes, there's the arc with, you know, Zuko and the pirates that happens a little later on in the season. Um, do you absolutely require that? That's where that's what I'm not particularly sure about. But, you know, you have to have Zuko kind of doing stuff, uh, you know, behind the scenes as well. And um, so... Um, it, it does get kind of tricky, but again, this is where you sort of do your setup going into uh, Siege of the North, um, and that's why I'm saying 118, 119, 120 have to be, I think, covered basically uh, in full. Um, there's no real uh, debate about that whatsoever. Um, and 
I, and, and I think that's that's the the interesting thing about this is just when you really break it down, like book one, the structure of book one is not the most suited to an adaptation that isn't basically willing to make it be a little bit more episodic. There are parts of book one that are very serialized, but there are other parts that just absolutely aren't. And so the big question, I think, and the one that, that to me means a lot, is that you get introduced to a lot of important side characters here, but they don't necessarily play the biggest role within the overall book, the overall story of book one, but they become important later on. But you have to do their introductions here because there's a lot of stuff where like if you leave them for book two, there's a lot of book stuff going on in book two where like you have to introduce Toph, Azula, you know, towards the end of the season has got to get intro introduced, but then you have to properly introduce her, May, Ty Lee have to get introduced, um, and then there's, you know, book two has its own side characters that you also sort of uh, need to focus on as well. So can you really wait until this episode to introduce this character or not? Uh, and that's where I sort of like say this. Boomy, can you leave Boomy until book two and basically say, okay, Aang doesn't vin visit Omashu in book one, but his first time going to Omashu is in book two when it's captured by the Fire Nation. And so he technically in live action Netflix meets Boomy for the first time in 203. Um, that could theoretically work in that it would save you potentially a detour that is very hard to maybe incorporate into book one if you're trying to make it flow a little bit better. And because Boomy's intro is basically just Aang realizes someone from his past is alive again and more or less just tells him like kind of half of the information that he needs to know that he learns in 108, maybe Boomy can be saved for later. I think Suki probably has to be featured in this book. Just like I said, all the fan favorite stuff that relates to Kyoshi and so on, you have to have that there. Haru and Tyro probably are characters who could be cut if you absolutely had to. I don't think they're fan favorites necessarily, but the idea of the Earth Kingdom like rebellion type stuff that is a kind of minor plot point that they rarely touch on because they don't touch much on the war. Do you want to go into that or not? I'm not sure. Similarly, how are you just going to introduce like casually the the spirit world stuff uh, nicely in all of this? Again, you can do that. I think sort of through Avatar State stuff. Um, if you incorporate that earlier on, and the idea of spirit earlier on, I think that is definitely um, possible um, w with what you do. Because again, this is obviously where Iro sees you know uh, Ang on Fang, and you do what you do. You just have to make sure that you do it properly like this is this is one of the parts where the the last airbender movie went really really wrong by morphing a sort of fang and and the spirit of roku into this like thing just that was just called the dragon that was basically just serving the plot role of roku but they were not really making it clear that it is meant to be a past life just visualized differently so you know just do it the way it's done in the show this this is where you don't need to invent uh, the world or anything like that um so there's that. Uh, so you have to have this kind of sequence happen here, um, which obviously, you know, that makes some sense. Um, the waterbending arc, like I said, I think you can actually maybe use some of the learnings from the last Airbender movie to make that arc for Aang work a little bit better, have a little bit more of an emotional arc for Aang throughout the book by having him still reflect on the loss of his people a little bit further into the show uh, rather than it not being brought up that much like in ATLA. Um, backstory stuff, the fortune teller, I think, unfortunately, a lot of it probably is quite skippable. Um, and again, Bato, how do you just get to that introduction that, that effectively? How do you get to the, the Zhang Zhang stuff? The, the deserter, I, I think I, I could see a way that they can incorporate this a little bit more heavily into things. I could see them maybe doing something where they maybe like link together the idea of like the comic relics with the deserter or something like that. Um, where like that is a, a Zhao centric sort of, uh, you know, comic. And then the Zhang Zhang stuff also has to heavily involve Zhao. And, you know, you could actually make that maybe a full episode is just, you know, here's an episode where Zhao really makes a move and it has 
much of this episode plus this episode plus this episode. Um, but again, uh, this and this is where we probably don't realize that that there probably will be entirely maybe new stuff that we don't even know about. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and like I said, Teo Mechanist, it's, it's sort of hard to do. But, you know, otherwise, like, it feels like they've said they want to be authentic. To be authentic, you have to basically cover at least, I'd say, 70-80% of these characters. You have to have some of these fan favorite characters. And that's where, to me, like I've said before, in terms of casting, I less care about the characters who are really obvious, the main cast. And I'm more interested in, are you casting someone for Suki? Are you casting a Bumi? Are you casting a Zhang Zhang? A Haru? You know, th those type of things. That will tell us how in-depth they're actually going to go and tell us sort of what episodes they're actually uh, touching on or not. So, um, I think that's more or less everything that I want to do. Again, this is more of a conversation starter and we can discuss this in the comments. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll bring it to a close here by just, you know, Turning it over to you guys now. That's sort of my thoughts on things. Uh, how acknowledging that they are going to have to do some changes. Have to do some cuts. It's highly unlikely it'll be a shot for shot remake. Things will have to change. How do you think they should change it? What are the key aspects of book one? What can be cut? Which characters do they absolutely need to cover? And are there different ways to incorporate these characters in to maybe make the overall plot a little bit more flowing and less one note we go to this place and then we go to this like like make it less of a traveling show and make it into more of a a plot based show uh, how do they do that uh, as effectively as possible again we've seen an attempt already that didn't work in most people's minds but it had a few interesting ideas as we've discussed over the course of this uh, in the last airbender movie but how should this take all of that into account and potentially make this uh, more directed version of book one uh, so in the comments let me know what your thoughts are but that has been the video thanks for watching and bye